to the people themselves. Anderson versus Gladden, recorded at volume 188, Federal Supplement 666. That's a bad number. <laughs> All right. It is when federal legislation attempts to confer power upon the national government that it is not within it's not within the express or implied powers given by the Constitution that the legislation becomes vulnerable to this amendment. Okay? Now, what are we talking about here? Brady Bill? Huh? <sighs> They're not within their powers. They have no Tenth Amendment powers to take away the Second Amendment. Does that make sense to everybody? They don't have any powers to go and take away the, t the Second Amendment or any other amendment. The Fourth Amendment, the Fifth Amendment, nothing. And the Ninth Amendment precluded them from adding on to the Constitution in such a way that would take away the powers. So by the Ninth Amendment and the Tenth Amendment, they're totally locked out from doing a lot of the things that they do. But see, you've got to know that and be able to timely exercise it. So it's very important to understand your Tenth Amendment powers. Now, when in the course of human events it becomes necessary and proper, <coughs> and this is what we did, this is what we did to uh, help out Dr. Kevorkian. We made sure that his lawyer got this knowledge. We went in there and we dug up a writ of Quo Waranto. A writ of Quo Waranto. All right? Now, this doesn't look like much, but let me tell you something. What we're talking about doing here, see, most cities, at least in the state of Michigan, are by Public Act 230 Public Acts or Public Act 287 of Public Acts, and in every one of them there is a rights and powers section. Usually it's recorded at 2.2 .2 or 3.1, and it basically says, and I quote, Subject to the Constitution of the United States and the general laws of the state of Michigan, the city of, or the township of, has rights and powers too. And then it starts listing the rights and powers. Uh, right to have a police department, right to have a fire department, right to have a city hall, right. And it starts listing all these powers. Now, the antithesis to the argument is that if they're not within the Constitution of the United States and the general laws of the state of Michigan, they don't have any rights and powers. Does that make sense to everybody? In other words, they're in violation of their corporate charter, their franchise. They promised they would be within the Constitution of the United States and the general laws of the state of Michigan. Now, a lot of people, uh, they don't understand the power of this argument, so I want to really push this one home. I want you to understand. Whenever these little townships and these little cities and what have you, they start acting like King Farouk and that you're, you're, you don't matter and that they don't got to listen to you, this is what I want you to do. You ask them a point question and ask them, are you violating my constitutionally secured civil rights by however you claim they are? Because if you are, you have just waived your right to be the city of. And they'll laugh at you for a little bit, okay? Then you explain to them Public Act 230 of Public Acts, which states the rights and powers section, subject to the Constitution of the United States and the general laws of the state of Michigan. You have rights and powers. The antithesis to that argument is if you're not going to be within the Constitution of the United States or the general laws of the state of Michigan and you're going to violate my constitutional rights and trample my rights, what we're going to do here is we're going to go for a writ of mandamus in quo waranto. Well, that's a legal term, fancy legal term. But it is an ancient law that goes way back to England in the ancient times. And basically here is a judgment and a capious action for it. Right? You put down here the case. The case came on regularly for trial before the Honorable, and you put the judge's name in there, whatever it is, on a jury trial or a non-jury trial, dated such and such. The name appeared as for your counsel, and the name appeared for opposing counsel, right? The court heard the testimony and examined the proofs offered by the parties. The court considered itself fully advised in the premise, filed in its findings of fact and conclusions of law, and directed that judgments be entered in accordance with such findings, right? which means they figured out that they violated your constitutional rights, they didn't have a right to violate your constitutional rights, and in the hearing you showed they violated your constitutional rights, and the judge figured out they violated your constitutional rights. So now, for your prayer for relief, we're going to get this quo waranto. And this is exactly what happened to the Honorable Dr. Kevorkian. You'll notice that he was in jail and they were hammering the tail at him. The next thing you know, everything got real quiet. Nobody said nothing. And then the next thing you know, they were letting him go and they were minding their business. Now, this is how it happened. It is therefore ordered and adjudged and decreed. <clears throat> One, defendant corporation, the city of, you put down what name, has violated provisions of the act under which it was created, and also has violated provisions of Public Act 230 of Public Act Section 2.2, .2, Rights and Powers Section. In other words, it didn't uphold the Constitution of the United States or the general laws of the state of Michigan. Defendant corporation, the city of, whatever, Pontiac, whatever, accordingly has forfeited its charter and become 
liable to be dissolved by the abuse of its power. How much money am I talking about here, folks? We'd be in about nine decimal places plus, wouldn't you, don't you think? Now, do you think they're going to bother some little doctor when they're looking at shutting down a major city? What do you think is going to happen? Everything's going to get quiet and they're going to let the good doctor go. Same thing for you. Now, <clears throat> defendant corporation, you name them, therefore is dissolved, and the corporate rights, privileges, and franchise of defendants are declared forfeited to the people. Defendant corporation, you name them, is trustees, directors, managers, and other officials, officers, attorneys, and agents are forever restrained and enjoined from exercising any of the corporate franchise powers, rights, and or privileges previously exercised by defendants at city and from collecting or receiving any debts and or demands belonging to or held by defendant city whatever and from paying out or in any manner interfering with transferring or delivering to any person any of the deposits money securities property and effects of the defendant city or held by it you name a trustee which the state would do, probably the Attorney General, after your complaint is filed, is appointed receiver of all of the property, real and personal things, in action and effects of defendant city corporation held by and vested in defendants or in or to which defendant may be in any wise interested or entitled thereto. Plaintiff, the people of the state of whatever, that's us, state of Michigan, shall recover of defendant corporation, whatever city of, the sum of damages, real and personal, got me? They don't like that when you start talking that because they can go 100 million three times that amount in punitive damages, they get a little upset. As costs and disbursements of this action and the receivers is directed to pay this sum out of their pocket to whoever the attorney general, but you can have a person stipulated on there as an injured party. Now you put down there the Honorable Judge so-and-so presiding, the date entered, and you, you, he signs that, and that city is no longer a city. You see, when they violate your Constitution, this is one of the most powerful tools that you can use. And when you jam this on, you better wear a bulletproof vest to court, because you're probably going to get shot at by the time you get home. But it's nice to threaten, you know, you just threaten. Just drop one of them in the mail and say, if I don't get reasonable cause for my action in the near future, you're going to get one of these in the mail for real. Here is a summons for Coaranto. This is for the start of the thing. Right here. Summons. Form 41. By the way, you can get this in 21 AM Juris Forms and Practice. Your practical and practical forms and practice. All right. You name the party, you put down there who you are, the people of the state of Michigan versus, you are summoned to appear before what's in which court on such and such a date to show by what authority you claim to have use and or enjoy the rights and liberties and franchise, namely the corporation city of, set out and complained of in such and such a time, summons and further to do and receive all things which the court shall then order concerning you. This is kind of like pulling their driver's license for drunk driving. Now, that's an oversimplification, but sometimes these city uh, halls operate like a drunken sailor, and they just think they can abuse citizens' rights and trash them. Uh, you know who I am? <laughs> no, and I don't care. <laughs> you know who I am? I'm your boss. I'm the people. You're elected to work for me. And I'm trying to be nice, so I'd appreciate it if you just, we can sit down and work this out. But if we can't work this out, I'm going to sock it to you, baby, you got me? And that's basically how I feel about it. Now, we can get into some of these other things. Right here, this is a very important point. I'm trying to get this across to people, and you try and tell them, and they kind of look at you with this blank, starry-eyed look. But in the Constitution of the state of Michigan, the latest and greatest, the very first thing they talk about, notice it says Section 1, all political power is inherent in the people. Government is instituted for their equal benefit, security, and protection. Now let me ask you a question. Do you feel equal benefit? I don't. 